In this video, we'll take a look at the Heathkit CM1 Direct Reading Capacity Meter, a piece of electronic test equipment dating from the 1950s. The three fundamental types of electronic components are resistors, capacitors, and inductors. Capacitance is the value of a capacitor measured in farads, typically microfarads, nanofarads, or picofarads. Various instruments can measure capacitance, including impedance bridges and dedicated capacitor testers. Modern digital multimeters often have a basic capacitance measurement mode as well. As always, there's a trade-off between the cost of the instrument and its accuracy and flexibility. The CM1 direct reading capacity meter is an instrument that measures the value of a capacitor and displays it on an analog meter. Heathkit promoted this as a direct reading meter to distinguish it from impedance bridge type instruments that require a number of steps to be performed in order to make a capacitance measurement. Suggested uses for the instrument were in labs, production testing, and hobbyists. One catalog mentions some specific applications for amateur radio use, testing match pairs of capacitors in single sideband filters, determining the length of a roll of coax cable or shielded wire, and measuring the capacity to ground of a mobile radio station. It can measure capacitance over four ranges that have full-scale values of 100 picofarads, 1,000 picofarads, or 1 nanofarad, 0 0.01 microfarad, and 0 0.1 microfarad. The accuracy was not specified, but the unit was provided with some precision capacitors in order to calibrate it, so the accuracy would approach that of the capacitors, which was plus or minus 1% for the 100 and 1,000 picofarad ranges, and plus or minus 2% for the 0.01 and 0.1 microfarad ranges. The unit runs on 105 to 125 volts AC, 50 to 60 hertz, and takes about 25 watts of power. It uses three vacuum tubes and weighs about five pounds. I wasn't able to determine the exact years of production, but it appears to have been offered from 1956 to 1960. It was sold only as a kit. The selling price in 1957 was US 2950, which is equivalent to about $250 today. It appears that early units used a chicken head knob, which was later changed to the gray round heath kit knob seen on this unit. Some pictures have the binding posts on a small phenolic board, but most have them mounted directly on the case, like this one. A CM1U model was offered for the UK and European markets, which had the same features but operated on 220 volts. The front panel has an on-off switch, pilot lamp, and switch to select from one of four ranges. The capacitor under test is connected to the binding posts. The line cord comes out the back. There's a carrying handle on top and feet on the bottom of the metal case. The case was common with some other Heathkit products, such as their vacuum tube voltmeters and AC voltmeters. It used the same meter movement as the other instruments, but with a different scale. To operate the unit, turn it on and allow it to warm up for at least five minutes. Set it to a suitable range or on the highest range if the capacitor value is unknown. Connect the capacitor to the banana jacks, test clips, or use external test leads. Adjust the range to display a value on the scale without going over scale. Then read the value of capacitance off the meter using the appropriate scale for the range selected. Here is a 0.1 microfarad capacitor being measured, showing full scale on the highest range. Here is a smaller 100 picofarad capacitor. And here is a variable capacitor which measures over a range of almost zero to about 150 picofarad. To measure small values of capacitance, it was preferred to use the alligator clip adapters that were provided. If measuring small capacitance values using long test leads, you can take the capacitance of the leads into account by first measuring the capacitance of the leads only, and then subtracting that from the measured value.
The unit's constructed in a metal case made from four pieces, the front panel, chassis, a support bracket, and the rear cover. The layout of the components is quite tight. During restoration, I needed to disassemble the support bracket to get at the capacitors. It uses three vacuum tubes, a 6BX7GT oscillator, 6X5GT rectifier, and 0A2 voltage regulator. The meter is a 4.5 inch 50 microamp movement, the same as used on the Heathkit vacuum tube voltmeters. The front panel has the meter, binding posts, pilot lamp, range switch, and power switch. Some components are mounted on the range switch and on a terminal strip. Mounted on the top of the chassis are the three tubes, two octal and one miniature, the power transformer, and the four range calibration potentiometers. Under the chassis are the filter caps, resistors, and some point-to-point -point wiring. The unit measures capacitance by rectifying a square-sided pulse and reading the average value of the voltage on the meter. The impedance of the circuit, including the capacitor under test, determines the shape of the waveform and consequently the average value. The power supply uses a transformer to isolate the unit from the AC line. It produces the 6.3 volt heater voltage for two of the tubes in the pilot lamp. A high voltage winding goes to a 665 GT full wave rectifier and is then filtered by two electrolytic capacitors and resistors. A 0A2 gas regulator tube maintains a constant 150 volts so that the unit remains accurate if the power line voltage fluctuates. These gas regulator tubes don't use a heater or filament. In proper operation, you can see a slight purple glow. A 6X5GT dual triode is used as a multivibrator oscillator circuit. The frequency varies with the range selected. The oscillator frequencies I measured on my unit were 100 picofarad range, 160 kilohertz, 1000 picofarad range, 6.4 kilohertz, 0.01 microfarad range, 319 hertz, and on the 0.1 microfarad range, 99 hertz. On each range, a different capacitor is selected, along with a potentiometer that's adjusted during calibration. Here I've connected the unit to a capacitance substitution box. On an oscilloscope, you can see the signal across the capacitor under test. As I change the capacitance value, you can see the wave shape change. Regarding safety, there is no fuse, but the unit is isolated from the AC line by the power transformer, so the unit is floating with respect to ground. There are no capacitors on the AC line, so no leakage current is likely. If I was to use the unit on a regular basis, I would make it a little safer by adding a fuse and a grounded three-prong cord. The unit needs to be calibrated after construction. Calibration is done using the four precision capacitors that originally came with the kit. These would have been matched at the Heathkit factory to be within the required specs. Two of them were actually made from pairs of caps. One cap was provided corresponding to the full scale on each range. Calibration is done by connecting the cap and adjusting the corresponding potentiometer for the range to read full scale. The original calibration caps would have been lost long ago, and I don't have any precision caps, but my capacitor substitution box seems to be pretty accurate, so I use that to calibrate each of the four ranges at full scale. I bought this unit on eBay in March of 2017. It arrived in good shape, was well packed and double boxed. The seller said it was working. It was dusty inside, but it had no major rust or scratches on the outside and looked like it was all original parts. It didn't come with a manual or the original calibration caps. I did find a complete copy of the manual on the internet. Both the unit itself and the manual use the term MMF or micro microfarad rather than the more commonly used unit of picofarad. 
Construction quality of this unit is okay. The original line cord was pretty brittle and a little bit grungy. It had insulation missing in some spots where it appeared that a soldering iron had touched and melted it. After a visual inspection, I powered it up slowly using a variac, watching the current on a kilowatt meter. The two tubes lit up, and the 0A2 gas discharge tube started to glow when at full line voltage. I measured the power consumption as around 40 watts, which was significantly higher than the value of 25 watts spec in the manual. The unit seemed to be working on all ranges when connected to the cap substitution box, but needed calibration. I cleaned the case and inside of the unit and cleaned the contacts of the switches and pots. I replaced the line cord and rubber grommet with new ones. Some low-cost extension cords are a pretty good match to the original two-conductor line cord. All resistors were measured and were within spec. All the caps seem to be okay, but I replaced the three paper caps as these are generally leaking when they're this old. I was seeing some erratic readings before I replaced them, which could have been a symptom of this. The dual electrolytic filter cap tested okay for value and ESR, so I decided not to replace it. I measured the voltages against those in the manual and all were within spec, although generally higher due to the higher line voltage, 120 volts AC versus 110 volts AC. I then went through the calibration procedure using my cap substitution box as a reference. The unit was missing the banana jack to alligator clip leads, so I made these from some junk box parts. The CM1 had been on my list of Heathkits to acquire for some time. It was the only capacitance meter of this type that Heathkit offered, and it's relatively rare. Its advantages included ease of use, low cost, small size, and the ability to measure quite small values of capacitance. Its main drawbacks were it could only measure pure capacitance. Any resistance will throw off the reading. Even a resistor will give a reading, for example. It can't measure larger capacitors over 0.1 microfarad. It can't measure resistance, inductance, leakage, power factor, Q, or other component values. It's not particularly accurate with only a few ranges with a 10 to 1 ratio between ranges. And it was line powered and not portable. It was mostly made obsolete by more accurate and flexible cap testers and impedance bridges like this one. And today most digital multimeters have a basic capacitance function and there are inexpensive digital LC meters such as this one. I hope you enjoyed this look at a piece of vintage test equipment. Check out my other YouTube videos on Heathkit test equipment, shortwave and amateur radio products. If you're interested in vintage test equipment you may want to purchase my book Classic Heathkit Electronic Test Equipment. The book covers Heathkit's test equipment products starting with a brief history of Heathkit an overview of the test equipment product lines, and tips on buying and restoring vintage test equipment from sources like eBay. Separate chapters cover the major categories of component testers and substitution boxes, frequency counters, meters, oscilloscopes, power supplies, signal generators, tube testers and checkers, and miscellaneous test equipment. Each chapter includes one or more in-depth sections that looks at a representative model from my Heathkit collection covering its features, operation, and notable quirks or trivia. The book is available from lulu.com and Amazon and retails for US $19.95.